It's not too late to get an air-cooled Porsche, but it's going to be pretty soon. Hey guys, my name is Tanner Seymour. I'm a professional automotive photographer and videographer. Uh, I work primarily with Porsches and Porsche speed shops. I kind of created this channel to talk all about my passion for these cars. Um, I, I would be what you would call kind of a vintage adventure kind of enthusiast. Um, I, I just have a, a real heart for the design and the feel and the characteristics of the old 911s, the air-cooled ones, 964 to G, G bodies and F models, and even the 993 in some instances. So today, guys, I wanted to bring to your attention, if you're not aware, the rising costs of air-cooled cars. And if you were thinking about getting into one, I would, long short of it is get one as soon as you can. Uh, the G bodies are, probably the best bang for your buck you can get out of an air-cooled car. The 964s have just breached averaging over $100,000, so I don't see you getting a good drivable 964 unless it's uh, unless it's per se, you know, maybe a Triptonic or something like that. Um, but anything like that below $100,000, I'm just not seeing. And uh, what led me to kind of look into this a little bit further and do some investigation is uh, the offers I've received for my G body. It's kind of a 930 body, um, but it's got a 3.0 liter engine in it, so not a real 930. When I bought the car last year, you know, I, I actually got some offers that were kind of jokingly, kind of like, haha, seriously, um, for around 40,000. And full disclosure, I bought it for 55,000. I didn't disclose this at the time, I don't think. Essentially, since the year of ownership with that car, uh, despite all the history and problems that we've had, we've been getting it up and running though. And uh, it runs great. We had an overheating issue. That's the last problem we're dealing with. And now it's functional with it. That's a story for another time. But the offers I've been getting for this car uh, have been increasing over the year by a factor of, you know, five to $10,000 in some instances. Uh, I, I got an offer for 70,000. Again, we're jokingly, I don't know how serious these offers are. They're just a guy throwing, you know, DMs at me. Uh, and it's been kind of something I've looked at as more so of, of a joke, but then looked a little bit serious because I'm like, well, how much are these cars going for nowadays? So that led me to bring a trailer. I think it's probably the most used auction, sh auction shite. So that led me to bring a trailer and bring a trailer has this really cool feature where you get to track the price history for what's sold and how much for. And I noticed a really jarring trend. I knew the prices of these cars were going up. They're older cars not being made, more demand, yada, yada. But uh, the rate at which they're going up is, is quite, it's, cr it's crazy. Now, usually a car like this, like we'll take the G body 911, for example, the most bang for your buck air cooled car, I'll, I'll call it. They would rise about maybe a thousand dollars a year. Now this is based off of data in 2006 to 2010s. You'd roughly see, you know, every year, maybe a thousand dollar increase. In the last five years, they've been increasing by a factor of three to $4,000 a year. And this is when things become alarming because scarcity and, and investors get involved or people who like to invest in things, right? And there's a different mindset between somebody who sees a car as an investment tool and somebody who sees a car as passion, as, a, as an enthusiast, right? I'm not gonna shame anybody for which way they think, but when investors get involved or somebody, some people buy cars to with the idea of reselling, right? With the idea of value hold in mind, money doesn't seem to be much of a worry um, because their thought is if trends follow upwards, I'm putting $55,000 into this car and I'm gonna get five years down the road, 60, 75,000, $80,000 out of it. And it's just gonna sit in the garage as an investment tool and they have disposable income like that. Now, somebody who's an enthusiast will look at a car, of course, and say, well, I wanna drive this, it needs to be functional, and I'm gonna have to factor in repairs and yada, yada, yada. They're all thinking about the experience, not the resale. And so price is a factor because inevitably, as you drive this car, you're gonna to have to put 
uh, maintenance into it. You're going to have things that break. You're going to want to mod it. Maybe you're, you, there's expenses, gas, and all this other things. There's expenses with it. It's it's a tool. It's it's a fun toy per se. The end result of you owning this car is your experience for the enthusiast. And for the investor, the end result of owning this car is the money. Maybe some of the experience. Maybe you know you can mix the two however you want. But that's kind of a big major problem I'm seeing in the air-cooled space. We see it a lot with collector cars, 930s, uh, your Ferraris, your Lamborghinis, your special edition uh, stuff. You know, it's, it's why prices for a new Dakar are, you know, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 over MSRP and, and why people are buying the GT3 RS like crazy and there's a really long wait time. Some people, I'm not saying majority of them, but a lot of them, um, are buying these cars to hold and resell and for the money profit, not for the enthusiast. I don't want to shame anybody for making money. As an enthusiast, you have an opportunity right now to get into these cars. You spend your money wisely. I'm not saying invest. I'm not saying this is an investment or anything like that. That's not what this is. This is just a, hey, pay attention to this. Hey, be aware. Um, if you're an enthusiast who is pocketing the cash or holding the cash to buy one of these cars so you can drive it and use it and resto mod it, it may be a good time right now to jump in the vehicle uh, before it skyrockets. In the long term, if you buy and hold something that you love, without the idea of resale, you're not going to be upside on it, right? Because you bought it for what you love it for. For me, in my instance, I bought the car and you know, it, it, it's, it's gonna be used, it may be trashed, it may burn in a ditch, um, but I bought the car to run the car. I'm an enthusiast. If I was a smarter man, maybe I'd buy it as an investment and let it sit in a garage, but I'm not. Um, I'm a passionate man, you know, and so I bought this car to love. I bought it to, I bought mine to run and use and abuse, knowing that $55,000, that's not an investment, that's a throwaway, right, for me. Well, I mean, I'm not saying I'm rich or anything like that. I'm just saying I know full-heartedly that this money that I put into the car, I may never see again. And I'm okay with that because the experience is worth that to me. Same with the Cayenne that we just bought. I, I wanna kind of give the enthusiasts a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of a warning. Um, enthusiasts like me, uh, who maybe you have that kind of income and you want to put it to use and you want the experience, get it now. Um, and if you want to just experience it for a little bit and sell it, that's fine. Get something that works, buy it, and then hold it and resell. I think it might be a good idea for that. Um, but at least you had the knowledge and experience of what it's like to drive one of these cars. And the rarer and rarer these cars become and the more demand they're going to have, the more people I think are going to be less likely to take them out and drive them. I see it all the time. I try and get people come shoot with their cars all the time uh, with these amazing experiences, but they're afraid, you know, of, of something that might happen because they have the idea that they're going to resell it, right? And so it has to be preserved for the cash that they're going to get. All in all, guys, I just wanted to make this video for the enthusiasts out there. Uh, as a fair warning, uh, these cars do seem to be going up in value pretty fast. I wouldn't be surprised if two, three years down the road, a regular 911 G body goes for above $100,000. Um, just kind of seeing where the trajectory is with the F models, the uh, 993s, and the 964s specifically too. Um, the G body, I think, is aside from the F model, the most pure 911 experience you'll ever get. The 964 does have some computers and technology put into it back in you know the 80s that makes it a little bit different, um, but not not entirely so. The 964 and 993 are special cars in their own right, but the G mod, the G body, uh, especially now, is getting recognized as the iconic 911. And there's a lot of people out there who reference that model specifically when they're talking about air-cooled 911s. It is becoming kind of the, the standard as with the 964. The 964 is still, I think, the holy grail of 911s. I still think people hold that one to a pedestal. And then the F, F model and the 993 in their own right, and the G body's been left behind a little bit. But now, out of necessity or whatever it is, they're just, the G body's now expensive. It's getting expensive. And so, before it gets too crazy, before we start seeing 964 prices and, and that kind of stuff, highly encourage you 
get in it now, experience it, love it, drive it, do what I'm doing to it, which is tearing it up and rebuilding it as a safari, you know. I want to see more builds out there. But guys, I really appreciate it. I don't want to be alone in driving these cars. Uh, so get one, drive one. And if you like this kind of video, this topic discussion, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I love to talk more about Porsches and experience and my knowledge and, and kind of what I've seen and trends. Um, but I'm also, I'm also acknowledge that I may be ignorant in some areas. So please uh, let me know if I'm missing anything in the comments below. I do read them. I will respond to you. And uh, I do value every single one of you who takes the time to watch this video. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and we'll see you in the next episode. Three dark days. Three dark days. Three dark days since they locked me away. It's been three dark days.